Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Office Bloke Aiden. I'm Gaina. I'm So. Today we've got every pizza style we could find in the United States. I only knew two, really. What, are you to New, New York and Chicago? Chicago. <laughs> is Chicago deep not deep dish? Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. Chicago's it's the same thing. Like, yeah. No, but New York all the way, I reckon. Yeah, but I only thought there was two types of pizza. Like deep dish or... Yeah, like thick, a thick base you know, or a thin, thin base. Thin crust, yeah. We'll probably end up seeing some mad pizza. Like, with... <laughs> yeah. Like loads of pickles inside it or something. I bet they won't be barbecue oh. pizza like you like. I think the only good barbecue pizza are for it. Really? Everyone's saying well, Aiden likes barbecue pizza. We don't even eat that over in barbecue sauce. Really? Yeah, yeah, you should try it, man. It's really <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah. I do like barbecue with chicken. That's like a good Yeah, I combo. put chicken on the pizza. Yeah. yeah. I like yeah. buffalo chicken pizza. Yeah, same. Yeah. So maybe it's different flavours. Yeah, we'll have a, we'll find out anyway. That's what, what the video is for, right? Uh, yeah. This is every pizza style we could find in the United States. As the saying goes, pizza is like sex. Even when it's bad, it's still pretty good. What's not to love about a chewy crust, zesty sauce, gooey cheese, and a mind-boggling array of potential toppings? The beauty of pizza is that it can be made in an infinite number of ways. Today on Weird History Food, we're looking at most every style of pizza made in the United States. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Food channel. After that, leave a comment and let us know what other food-related topics you would like to hear about. Okay, time to deliver all kinds of delicious pizza pies in 20 minutes or less, guaranteed. Just press pause. That's what made me laugh in America. They call it a pie. What, a pizza pie? Yeah. They say, Is that not just like the deep dish ones, though? No. It, it, anything, it was like, should we go grab a pie? And I'm like, a pie? And then I realised they, they refer to pizzas as pies. No, they don't. Yeah. I've never heard of that before. Yeah. A pizza pie, they call, do they call it a pizza pie? I've heard of a pie? pizza pie before, but I thought that was when it was like quite a thick pizza and it looked a bit like a pie. That would make more sense. I, I just remember people referring to pizza as a slice of pie. You know, some, some, some pie, and I was like... Surely not. I remember saying, well, pie to me <laughs> is like cheese and onion pie or well, yeah. and kidney pie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you just go back a bit, it says Straight. pizza pie. <laughs> every style of pizza made in the United States. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird Was History Food that? channel. No. After that, leave a comment and let us know what other food-related topics you would like to hear about. Okay, time to deliver all kinds of delicious pizza pies in 20 minutes or less. Oh, yeah. Guaranteed. New York and pizza go together like the birds and the bees and bagels and cream cheese. Not surprising then that the Big Apple has its own brand of pie. Tracing back to the recipes that immigrants from Naples brought with them across the Atlantic, New York style pizza has evolved into its own thing. It's cheesier than its Neapolitan ancestor and a bit bigger. The wide triangular slices, which any true New Yorker would fold lengthwise to eat, are cut from a thin crust pie about 18 inches in diameter. The perfect size for a pizza wrap. <laughs> <laughs> Overshadowed by its thin crust cousin, Grandma Style is New York's best kept pizza secret. Named for all the nonnas who express their amore in the kitchen, Grandma Pie has roots in the old. This is one of them things as well. I've got a bit of a, like, I feel like square pie, square, I oh, almost called it a pie. Yeah. <laughs> it tastes square better. pizzas kind of taste better yeah, than I, triangular pizzas. I agree. The first time I tried square pizzas was when I or lived in Canada. circular pizzas. And it came, and it was like this massive square box, and I was like, I have never in my life had a square pizza before, but for some reason... You have it in Greg's, don't you? You get square pizza from Greg's. Oh my yeah, God, yeah. you do. Because no, I was just about to say, I've never had a square pizza, and I was like, I one from Greg's yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. It I think it just, yeah. just tastes better. Yeah, I don't know what it is. But why? Is it the novelty of is it? Is it because it's like almost crust all the way around, or like... Well, no, because in the middle, the mm. middle piece is not, there's no crust at all, is there? Mm-hmm. Weird. If you think if you have a round pizza, there's always a crust at the top. Yeah, no. yeah. But if you have like that one, there's got no crust on at all. That's probably from the middle. That's crazy. Huh? But it always tastes better. And also, what I love is they they have um, little pots of like chili flakes that you can put on. Oh yeah. Where? What is that in America? Yeah. I can see it on that one. Yeah. I feel like in Pizza Hut they have like little flakes mm. or something. Do they? Yeah. I've not had a pizza in ages. Like Sicilian pizza, Grandma Pies boast a thick crust and are baked in rectangles. But unlike its Sicilian ancestor, the Grandma style dough is proofed for a shorter time, producing a heartier base. Toppings are often simple. 
just cheese, fresh tomato sauce, maybe some herbs, and that's it. No pineapple on this pie. <laughs> Despite its roots in Sicily, Nona's invention is relatively recent. Long Island pizza makers began producing grandma pies in the 1960s or 70s, although the pizza only started appearing on menus within the last two decades. Say, Chicago-style pizza, and many people imagine deep dish. But most residents of the Windy City will correct the record. What's the difference? Come on, spit it out. Deep dish is for tourists. Real <laughs> Chicagoans eat tavern-style pizza. A thin and crispy crust pie cut into squares. The small, uniform slices make for a very social pie. They're easily held by hand, ideal for parties and events. And for eating at the bar while watching the Bears have another losing season. That's the Chicago way. Buffalo Most people style. associate Buffalo, New York with its namesake hot wings. But the city has another culinary curiosity, buffalo-style pizza. As Arthur Bovino described it in the Daily Beast, the dough has the lightness of focaccia. There is always lots of cheese. And while the sauce does happen to be slightly sweet, that ends up being a nice contrast to the spicy oil pooled in the copious charred, meaty pepperoni. That sounds delectable and messy. Mmm, delectable messiness. Buffalo pizza also lacks the typical crusty rim. The sauce, cheese, and pepperoni extend to the edge of the pie, so bring extra napkins. New York City pizzas. may be the self-proclaimed capital of pizza in the U.S., but its neighbor of the eastern seaboard has its own loyal base of pie hounds. In New Haven, Connecticut, locals and Yale University students alike line up for the celebrated abits a New Haven original. As pizza historian Liz Barrett described it, one of the hallmarks of a beats is its birth in a coal oven. But that's not the only thing that defines a New Haven style pizza. Some of the characteristics that many New Haven style pies seem to have in common are what locals call a flat, <coughs> not thin, and tender crust, which is a result of the proofing process and the use of all-purpose flour, sauce that is never pre-cooked, the use of Pecorino Romano cheese instead of mozzarella, and the use of breadcrumbs beneath the dough during baking instead of cornmeal. <coughs> the white clam pie originated at Frank Pepe Pizzeria Napolitana sometime in the 1950s, but now you can find examples in nearly every pizzeria in New Haven. According to Barrett, this bivalve studded pie is a direct descendant of a New Haven style pizza. In its purest form, the white clam pie is topped with fresh shucked clams. Olive oil, I don't know about that. Romano cheese, don't like pie. oregano, oh, do you know? and garlic. No. Some use fresh clams, some can. Each preparation has its set of enthusiasts, depending on the severity of your hangover. Is that something you've tried before? I have tried it, and the reason I don't like it is because it's got no tomato sauce on it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's it's is it not funny. a bit like clam chowder though, but a pizza version? No, because clam chowder is like it's obviously a soup, and and you, you know that it's like soupy. Whereas that, there's no. <laughs> you would, wouldn't you? Soupy, soupy. <laughs> <laughs> but with that, it's um, it, I don't know. It's weird on a pizza, and there's no tomato sauce. I prefer the tomato yeah. sauce. Yeah, you have to have tomato sauce on it. Probably just be a bit. I'm not. I don't know. I do like clams, really? but I don't like clams on a pizza. Yeah. Mm. Bit of a weird combination, isn't it? Like pineapple. I like anchovies on a pizza. Yeah, pizza lovers in Detroit rev their engines for the distinctive Detroit style pizza. A twist Ooh. on the classic grandma pie. See, that's what you would call it's baked a pie. at a higher Ooh. temperature than known as pizza, and it's cut into rectangles, like the pizza we used to get at school. It also differs from other pizzas in its cheese. A true Detroit style pizza uses Wisconsin brick cheese, not mozzarella. To trace the origins of Detroit style pizza, look no further than Buddy's, which has operated as a restaurant since 1946. Although it started in Motor City, Detroit style pizza has gained a national following. Restaurants serving it have sprung up in noted pizza towns like New York and Chicago. Pizza is a popular snack option at bars nationwide. Nothing mops up alcohol like a slab of dough and cheese. But not every pie consumed in a bar is technically bar-style pizza. Proper bar style starts with a thin, crispy crust with a touch of pliability and is generally personal size, around 10 to 12 inches. Although technically, any pizza is personal sized if you're not a coward. What? Instead of a generous crusty rim, in this variation, the sauce and cheese extend nearly to the edge of the pie. So again, Quite napkins are well advised. Well, Many it? regions claim to have created the bar pizza, but the style's true origins remain a mystery. Sometimes a name says it all. 
That's true of Washington, D.C.'s signature pizza, the so-called jumbo slice. <laughs> Doesn't even fit in the box. <laughs> a jumbo slice can range in length from roughly a foot to about 16 inches. The slices are so- How are you gonna eat that? You're gonna have to literally have to eat it with two it. hands. I think you'd have to fold it up. Yeah. And then hold it or roll it. Yeah, you'd probably roll it yeah. better. That oh is quite- God. I do like going to like a, <laughs> like a small restaurant, like a, like a truck Mom's, type yeah, thing, Mom and then you get like one place. slice of pizza. Yeah. Mm. The closest that we got to was probably uh, in the mall when they had, um, I can't remember the name of it, I can't remember the name of it, but they have mm. like a pizza place in most of the malls. It was still like one slice. Yeah, and slice. Yeah. So big that they are traditionally served in oversized containers, but those nights when you just need to eat as much pizza as you can legally buy, come on, we've all been there. Pizza! You want to fight about pizza? Bring up Deep Dish. <laughs> Standing and imposing two to three inches tall. Look at that. Deep yeah, Dish no. is more reminiscent I'm, of a conventional some I've never tried. than almost any other pizza. Cheese, toppings, and tomato sauce are nestled within and atop a buttery crust. And it's all baked longer than a typical pizza, usually close to an hour. Because it bakes for so long, the tomato sauce typically goes on top so the cheese and toppings That's don't burn. Good, yeah. Deep Dish Pizza has a long history in Chicago. Pizzeria Uno, which Chicagoans Ike Sewell and Rick Ricardo opened in 1943, claims to be the originator. Over the decades, this thick pie has been ridiculed as much as it has been embraced. Proud New Yorker John Stewart ranted that Chicago Deep Dish was nothing more than a casserole. Even Chicagoans <laughs> have voiced skepticism. Barack Obama observed, no offense Chicago, I love our pizza. New York's a little more practical. Chicago deep dish is basically, you have to sit down and eat it like lasagna. So basically the biggest complaint about deep dish pizza is you can't hork it down in three bites, which is admittedly a fair critique of pizza. St. Louis is known for its famous arch and gooey butter cake. It also has its own pizza. Like tavern style and many bar style pies, St. Louis pizza consists of a thin crust cut into Ooh, squares. But here's where think? it differs. Baked at high temperatures, its crust is cracker thin. Plus, it features Provel cheese. I thought you liked thin pizza. I do, but that looked like it would be a bit too dry. It, did, it didn't look like much to it, it did like, that? It was like a bit cardboardy looking. Mm. A bit more cheese. I've never heard cheese of that cheese. It doesn't even look like cheese. Unless it's provolone. It doesn't look like cheese. I've heard of provolone, but go back a little bit. Cause it's... Known for its famous arch and gooey butter cake. It also has its own pizza. Like tavern style and many bar style pies, St. Louis pizza consists of a thin crust cut into squares. But here's where it differs. Baked at high temperatures, its crust is cracker thin. Plus, it features Provel cheese, a processed cheese that's become a favorite in the city. Mm, it kind of sounds like a family-sized bagel bite, which is to say, delicious. <laughs> These days, people put unconventional toppings on pizza when they want to show off their creativity or go viral. But there was a time not long ago How much reckon that when cost? putting things like oh, chevre, arugula, fried chicken, or artichoke hearts were considered ghastly. That's until the 1980s, when California cuisine, known for highlighting farm-fresh local ingredients, was born in restaurants like Chez Panisse and Spago. Restaurant tours like Alice Waters and Wolfgang Puck put wood-fired pizzas on their menus featuring fresh, local ingredients. Puck especially raised eyebrows with toppings like smoked salmon and caviar, or Sonoma lamb with braised greens and rosemary. Because there is nothing different or unusual about California pizza's crust, shape, or cut, these days we just call it pizza, with fancy toppings. <laughs> Old Forge, Pennsylvania <coughs> may be a small town of roughly 8,000 people in the northeastern corner of the state, but it has its own distinct style of pizza. The original Old Forge pizza was cooked up in the 1920s at a local tavern owned by the Ghigiarelli family. The pie is baked on a tray to produce a thick crust with a crispy exterior and soft interior. A red pizza uses a sweet, chunky tomato sauce, while a white pizza features cheese and toppings inside. You mean the whole pizza is a stuffed crust? Oh yeah, they've got to figure it out. Oh my gosh. Food. So much so that many of the town's pizzerias make pizza the same way. You can call that a pie, I guess, yeah. can't you? Yeah, that is like a pie. Yeah. Pizza pie. <laughs> 
Most people have heard of Cuban sandwiches and Cuban coffee, but Cuban-style pizza probably isn't as familiar. Am I hallucinating here? Just what in the hell do you think you're doing? Learning about Cuba, having some food. It turns out this fresh take on the classic is as delicious as it is different. What makes it so unique? The addition of Gouda to its cheese blend, proving once again that adding more cheese is always a Gouda idea. <laughs> this pizza style can be found in Miami, Florida, home of a robust Cuban-American community, where restaurants like Ray Pizza and Paco Mer have been serving up slices for years. Youngstown, Ohio, located in the northeastern part of the Buckeye State, was a steel hotspot in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. It flourished thanks to in part a workforce composed largely of immigrants, including Italians. The Italians who flocked to the city's Briar Hill neighborhood brought along their language, culture, and recipes. And since you've been watching the video for this long, you know recipes means pizza. The new residents drew upon pizza from Italy's Basilicata region to create Briar Hill-style pies in Youngstown. Not too thick and not too thin, the pizza has a crunchy crust and uses Romano cheese. But the secret is in its Sunday sauce, a tomato-based concoction that is both sweet and tangy. The Briar Hill-style pie became popular in the 1940s and continues to be served in some city restaurants. Why town is my town. Yeah. Staying in Northeast Ohio, about 40 miles west of Pittsburgh is Steubenville, Ohio, home of Ohio Valley Pizza. What makes it so unique? When a pie goes into the oven, it is just the dough, tomato sauce, and a dusting of cheese. Then an extra layer of cold cheese and toppings is added after the bake, creating a tantalizing blend of hot and cold flavors. It sounds like a pizza a drunk person made by accident, but Ohio Valley pizzas have been a local favorite since 1945, when the DiCarlo family- I'm just thinking you wouldn't want like a cold pepperoni on it though, would you? No, that's what I thought when you- Can you I even mean, have pepperoni cold, or does it have to be cooked? No, you can have it oh, cold. Oh yeah, you can have it cold, yeah. yeah. It's like, it's like um, a sliced meat, like ham. So like when you have like oh, a pepperoni, have a pepperoni cold, yeah. to be fair. Oh yeah, yeah. On my mm. lunch today, I had an Italian sandwich and it was ham, salami and pepperoni with spicy mayo. You didn't have any like cheese on it? I didn't have cheese on it, no. I just had That's very salad, meaty. salad and then lettuce, tomato, onion mm -hmm. and then ham and pepperoni and salami mm. and spicy mayo and spicy mayo yeah. it's very nice it wasn't. Mm. i recommend it what do you mm. started a pizzeria in steubenville and debuted their unique pie one more for the ohio believe it or not dayton ohio is home to its own style of pizza Thin crust and square cut, Dayton style pies have been served since the 1950s, when Vic Cassano opened the pizzeria that bears his last name. Other pizza makers who had connections to Cassano soon joined the game and opened their own joints. Ron Holp of Ron's Pizza is credited with starting Dayton's Pizza Wars. Marion Glass, another Cassano connected pizza maker, upped the ante by adding a dining room to his restaurant, Marion's Pizza. Luckily, the best thing about a pizza war is that the customer never loses. It just means more pizza. Greek pizza is a unique pie served in restaurants opened by Greek immigrants in New England, particularly in Boston. It's been an alternative to quick service chains like Pizza Hut and includes a thick, chewy crust with plenty of sauce, cheese, and oregano. Many people who grew up eating this unique pie admit that while Greek pizza may not be the best style out there, it nonetheless hits the spot in a pinch. I was just about to say, do you know what I reckon would be really nice on the pizza? The feta Spinach. cheese. Yeah. Yeah, a feta, feta cheese and spinach. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I make a, um, like a tray bake, which is spinach and feta. It's really nice with loads of garlic. Mm. But Aidan won't eat it because he thinks he won't like it, but if you actually try I've it. I've never even known you've made that. Yeah. And also my, my spinach dip that I make. I've tried that and it wasn't really that nice. I don't know nice. if it's because you gave me the, like really bad tortilla chips. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> they, were, they were black. The tortilla chips were black. They were blue, actually. Oh. <laughs> Why were they blue? I don't know. I can't remember. It was the blue cornmeal. No, they didn't. I think it was the, the like the actual tortilla chip that made it not that nice, though. Really? So I'll have to try it with something normal, and then okay. maybe I'll like it. <laughs> Look, 
We may be talking about dozens of unique spins on a recipe, but we can all agree that the basic formula for a pizza is tomato sauce spread over dough with a sprinkling of cheese and toppings, yes. right? Not according to pizzerias in Trenton, New Jersey, <laughs> home to the tomato pie, the city's own take on grabbing a slice. Instead of layering cheeses over tomato, the Trenton pie puts a chunky tomato sauce on top of the cheese, creating a tasty tomato-forward flavor. Trenton tomato pie may even be a bit more authentic than some of the Americanized offerings out there. If authenticity is important when you're putting <laughs> oh, an 18 inch with extra cheese, the style has its roots yeah. in the pizza served at Joe's <laughs> Tomato Pies. The eatery was opened in 1910 by Joe Silvestro, an immigrant from Naples, the city that birthed pizza. One of Silvestro's employees opened his own restaurant, Papa's Tomato Pies, that still bakes tomato pies for customers in Trenton. In New York City, pizza lovers pay by the slice. Colorado, they pay by the pound. Colorado style pizza, wow. also known as Colorado Mountain Pie, Good which is something food should never be called, originated at Bo Joe's Pizzeria in the 1970s in Idaho Springs, just west of Denver. This decadent spin on the classic food is a doughy delicacy. Although diners can add a number of toppings, what really counts is its crust. Chefs use honey, not sugar, to bake the pizza's signature thick, braided crust. That's sweet. That would be interesting. The Quad Cities, five small cities clustered around the Mississippi River in Illinois and Iowa, may be overshadowed by nearby Chicago, but their pizza is worth trying. Quad City style pizza boasts a spicy tomato sauce and sausage, and is cut into strips instead of square or triangular slices for maximum binging efficiency. Chefs also use malt syrup or molasses to create a sweeter, softer crust. Philadelphia is known for its cheesesteaks, but the city of brotherly love serves up another local offering, tomato pies. They're made of thick dough, a layer of chunky tomato, and a scant dusting of grated cheese. As Philadelphia Magazine described it, tomato pie, our city's cheeseless wonder, can be traced back to thick tomato top dough slices made in Sicily that traveled here with waves of Italian immigrants, some of whose bakeries still stand as icons of the craft. And although New Jersey has its own thin crusted cheese on the bottom version, we like Philly style tomato pie best, with lots of red gravy, thick and tender crust, and just a sprinkling of Parmesan on top. Philly tomato pie has built generations of loyal fans who generally eat slices cold or at room temperature. Sometimes cold pizza is better pizza. Better than hot pizza? That's insane. You don't tell me what kind of pizza. Do you know why I reckon I love that? Because I love like the tomato to garlic bread. Yeah. Which is just like garlic bread with just tomato sauce on it. Yeah. Very, the one we had the other night as well was very garlicky. Where? Um, at Chibo. Chibo. Yeah. Very garlicky. It was yeah. nice. No, it is nice. Yeah, that's why I reckon I'd like that. Yeah. I probably hate it. Like, I just, I just want cheese. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah. Do you prefer like the cheesy garlic bread? Love, che yeah. love cheese. Love cheese garlic bread. And there's not enough tomato on it. I get really like, oh. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. See, I quite like it. Just like give it like, the thinnest layer of tomato sauce you can. Loads of cheese. Just for a bit of taste and loads of cheese. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like it the other way around. Same. <laughs> Pizza to like. New England boasts many regional specialties, many Aww. of them seafood related, like lobster rolls and clam chowder, and whatever mythological ocean serpent gave the patriots their powers. But there is another regional food associated with New England, beach Boy, pizza. That. It's a sheet tray pie topped with a sweet tomato sauce, a dusting of grated cheese, and a slice of provolone. You're most no. likely to find beach pizza in Massachusetts and New Hampshire. The location that's been slain that slice, of beach sorry. pizza the longest is Tripoli Baker. That slice of cheese on top makes it a little less appetizing. It's nice provolone. Mm, I'd probably love that. Yeah. Yeah. I might I'd probably like it, but it doesn't look as <laughs> good as just looks anything a bit else. Yeah. 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 Looks a bit rough. It needs to be it needs to be like a like a rectangle or a square yeah. one. So it matches. Yeah, yeah. true. Three, whose recipe dates back to nineteen forty four. Hey, Rhode Island is home to they one of the back. most unique pizza varieties. <laughs> Red Strips, which is lucky because Rhode Island isn't home to much else. Like the name suggests, Red Strips are rectangular <coughs> pizza strips of baked dough and tomato sauce. That's right. Red that Strips nice. are pizza without the cheese. Don't bother calling the police. They don't care. Yeah, that's 122 50 not for me, kid. I don't live here. The other unique aspect <laughs> of Red Strips is they aren't served at pizzerias. Instead, Rhode Islanders find Red Strips at local bakeries. I would like that. Yeah. 
Pizza comes in all shapes and sizes, but one of the most consistent features is mozzarella, right? Not according to the good people of Altoona, Pennsylvania, about two hours east of Pittsburgh. As the Pittsburgh City Paper described it, Altoona style is composed of Sicilian-style dough and cut into squares. On top of the dough is a layer of sweet That's the same. Rice, then some deli-style salami, then a thick green bell pepper ring, and then topped with yellow cheese, That's like Velveeta or American. Mmm, sounds more like mozzarella. The pizza's unconventional ingredients have led some to cry foul and insist it isn't pizza at all. But if we've learned nothing else today, it's that in... Those green pepper chunks were way too big. Yeah, they need to be really nice and thin. They were like that thick, yeah. weren't they? Mm. <laughs> Those are the type you would have in, like, a salad. Yeah. <laughs> These United States, the definition of pizza is limited only by the chef's creativity and locals' willingness to claim and defend it as their own. So what do you think? Which style of pizza is the best? Let us know in the comments. Who would have thought there'd be so many bloody Didn't styles of pizzas? Pizza, Hannah. I'd it never have thought. It was me thinking it was just a uh, thin crust and a thick crust. <laughs> Same yeah. idea. Do you have a favourite or what do you reckon you'd like the most? I like the square pizzas with lots of tomato and just a tiny bit of cheese on top mm. so that's one of the parmesan last ones cheese? that we have that i don't think i'd parmesan a little bit of parmesan but i don't think mm. just parmesan because i think it, it'd be too heavy mm. like taste because it's quite <clears> strong parmesan yeah. isn't it quite cheesy yeah my favorite probably be like the massive slice of pizza yeah like one <laughs> just massive that one slice. massive slice yeah. i think if i could yeah. pick any it would be pepperoni with mozzarella cheese i like mozzarella cheese or even burrata. I love burrata. In a deep dish? No, thin crust. <laughs> <laughs> the, so problem with, the problem with <coughs> deep dish is you get full too quick. You yeah. have one slice and then you, it's all stodgy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be honest, I can understand why they call it a, the deep dish ones because we don't really have stuff like that over here so I can understand why they call it a pie. Yeah. Because it looks a bit like... It's very seems like a quiche, I think, like the same sort of thickness. Yeah. But obviously... I remember generally. years ago I used to go to Pizza Hut and... The, I'd, I'd ordered the small deep dish and that was the same like the, it was about this big only small but yeah. then when you got the thin crust it was about this big but obviously it's the same amount of dough it's just rolled out exactly. yeah, 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 yeah we say that yeah it says that same thing yeah but and I really liked it then but then after I discovered the uh, thin crust I thought oh, I prefer that because it's not as heavy yeah, yeah I agree I like pink roast. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button for us and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Cheers. Bye.